Welcome to Informatica Cloud 201 On Demand course. Performance and Scalability After completing this module, you will be able to understand pushdown optimization and why is it used. Discuss ELT and ETL. Discuss guidelines and best practices for pushdown optimization. And understand recovery and types and discuss requirements driving architectural principles. Let us now understand what pushdown optimization is. Pushdown optimization, or PDO, is a feature in which mapping can be converted into a SQL code and executed on the database. Hence, this process generates database-specific SQL based on the mapping logic and sends processing to databases applicable and needed. This process is useful when we deal with huge volumes of data from the source. Sometimes, instead of reading all the data to the Informatica cloud server, it might be useful to do some of the transformations, such as filtering, aggregation, joining on the database itself, and then write the final output to the target. There are two types of pushdown optimization process. Full PDO where all the mapping logic is converted to SQL and sent to the database. We will focus on this type of optimization in our module. Partial PDO. In this type of PDO, a portion of mapping logic is converted to SQL and executed on the database, which could be either the source or the target. Why pushdown optimization? Let us understand why we need pushdown optimization. It helps us address scalability and performance problems encountered by customers with very large data sets from data warehouses or databases like Redshift, Oracle, or MS SQL, etc. It provides flexibility to push data transformation processing to the most appropriate processing resource, whether the source, target, or the Informatica cloud server. This can significantly improve performance and reduce data movement across the network. It can also leverage the power of database server hardware, which may be significantly more powerful than the ICS Secure Agent hardware. With this option, the ICS solution architects can select the database and push the transformation logic partially, or completely to the database in any one of the three ways. Full pushdown optimization partial pushdown optimization to the source, or partial pushdown optimization to the target. Before we get into the details of understanding how pushdown optimization works, let us discuss what are the various approaches of the data integration process. As you know, data integration is the process of combining data from many different sources into one application. You need to deliver the right data in the right format at the right time frame to fuel great analytics and business processes. There are three main approaches. ETL approach. This approach has three steps. E, extract from sources. T, transform inside ICS secure agent. And L stands for load into target tables in the data warehouse. ELT approach. This approach is a little different from EDL, but it also has three steps. E stands for Extract from Source System, L Load into Staging Tables inside the Data Warehouse or DBMS servers, and T stands for Transform inside the RDBMS engine using generated SQL with final insert into the target tables in the Data Warehouse combination of ELT and ETL approach, also known as hybrid ETLT approach. This approach consists of four steps. Extract from source systems, transform inside ICS secure agent, load into staging tables in the data warehouse, transform inside the RDBMS engine using generated SQL with a final insert into the target tables in the data warehouse. Now that we have already discussed a gist of combination ETL-ELT approach, let us now discuss same in more details. Initially, Informatica Cloud communicates with the ICS Secure Agent, 
and passes both ETL and ELT instruction to it. With the help of these instructions, the secure agent extracts the data from the required source and processes it according to the ETL instructions provided. The secure agent then loads the transformed data to a target database, say Oracle. Informatica Cloud then passes ELT instructions to the secure agent, due to which the secure agent extracts data again from the defined source, generates some SQL commands, and loads them to the target staging table in the database. In the staging table, the transformation of data takes place by the execution of the SQL commands. This is how we can get the best of both the worlds. Let us now compare the ETL and ELT approach based on different situations. In some cases, ETL seems to be a better approach as compared to ELT. When data sources and targets are heterogeneous or transformations are not well suited to set-based processing, ETL is a better approach as compared to ELT. Also, there is a situation when message-based feeds have real-time data acquisitions or transformations and tools are not convertible to SQL, ETL is the only approach. ELT approach does not work in such cases. Also, if uh, transformations are multi-step that do not require access to large volumes of historical or lookup data, ETL is a better solution. Now understand the following situation. ELT processes run successfully, but the ETL process have restrictions or do not get executed at all. Leverage database processing capacity during off-peak hours. Transformations that require access to historical data or requires access to very large lookups within database. Large data sets with small or minimal transformation requirements. Optimize performance for large data sets that are well suited for set operations. Example, complex joins and aggregations. Let us now discuss certain pushdown optimization usage guidelines. Full PDO is used when all data sources and targets exist in the same database server. The most common use case for full PDO is data warehouse staging to target loads. In the mapping shown here, you extract the data, sort and aggregate it, and then load it to the target. In the normal execution, the data can be selected from T1 and will be loaded to T2. But when we use PDO, the data is selected from U1.T1 and inserted into T2. So PDO automatically adds appropriate qualifiers for database transactions to execute properly. PDO may be most optimal if runtime is dominated by data volume out of and into data warehouse. So PDO can be used in situations when you require to access large volumes of historical data. Let's consider a situation where total amount of data in a table called orders is equal to 100 GB. For example, let us say total amount of data in orders table is equal to 100 GB. Data reader is 100% busy. Transformation 12% busy. Writer 100% busy. In such a situation, usage of PDO may be most optimal. If substantial amount of data can be reduced using transformations like filters, aggregations, and joiners, PDO may be the most optimal implementation. For example, if total amount of data in a table, say line item, equals to 100 GB, total amount of input rows processed by ICS mapping equals to 600 million. Let us say the total amount of input rows processed by pushdown after filtering is 70 million. In such a case, PDO may be the most optimal implementation. PDO may be the most optimal in cases where updated statistics result in better performance. Let us consider the following scenario. Filter condition provided at one time results in higher volume of rows from different tables at different times. In such cases, database may be able to choose the best master detail combination at runtime based on the updated statistics and this may result in better joiner performance. 
Next, let us discuss how data integration or DI to database or DB function conversion happens when pushdown optimization is used. Functions available in DI and DB differs. PDO may or may not be possible depending on this. You may note that PDO will make the appropriate DI to DB function conversion wherever possible. But you must check the list of functions that are supported for your database. For example, to convert an integer into a string and pad the string with leading zeros. In ICS, you can use an LPAD function, similar to IPAD. In DB, they may not be an equivalent LPAD function. If the processing can be represented in functions that are available in DB and DI, you can modify the mapping to push it down. In the example, if equivalent LPAD function is not available, then you can use the given expression. If not, use DI to do the processing. One more important guideline to be considered in PDO usage is PDO SQL. PDO SQL is the functional equivalence of the ICS mapping. Depending on the semantics of the data, it may be required to design PC mappings differently to get better PDO results. PDO SQL generates a subquery for lookup intentionally in order to retain the same session behavior as that of ICS, which returns one row for a lookup match. If your data semantics allow a joiner, replace lookup with a joiner transformation. Let us now discuss pushdown compatible connections. It is possible in a single PDO session that we can have multiple connection objects. However, when you run a pushdown optimization session that involves multiple connection objects, only one of the connection is chosen as an active connection. This connection, otherwise called as a user, is used to execute the pushdown SQL. The other connection objects will not be used. Because one user will be used for accessing all the tables, you need to ensure that the particular user has appropriate database permissions to access rest of the tables. The connection or user that is chosen will be based on a predetermined criteria. To configure full pushdown optimization, if the source and target reside in separate databases, enable the flag Allow Pushdown for User in Compatible Connections in the Session Properties. This also indicates that the database user of the active database has read permission on idle databases. As we discussed earlier, that if PDO session involves multiple DB connections, only one connection can be considered active and the others are idle connections. So far, we have discussed usefulness of PDO usage. Let us now discuss what are certain considerations and limitations of PDO. When you run a task with large quantities of data and full pushdown optimization, the database server must run a long transaction. Consider the following database performance issues when you generate a long transaction. A long transaction uses more database resources. A long transaction locks the database for a longer period of time, which can reduce data concurrency and increase the likelihood of deadlock. A long transaction increases the likelihood of an unexpected event. To minimize database performance issues for long transaction, consider using source or target pushdown optimization instead of a full pushdown optimization. The SQL for update could be expensive to execute if the target table is a lot larger than the source or if the target has many non-key columns. As an example, this could be due to each non-key column, generating a subquery that returns a value to be assigned to each non-key column. Let us now discuss the consideration and limitations for lookup and unconnected lookup transformation. Let us start with lookup filters. Pushdown optimization process stops when the lookup transformation returns multiple matches. This is because PDO cannot be configured to return multiple matches. Another important point to remember that PDO needs privileges in the database to create temporary views. This is because Informatica Cloud Service creates a temporary view in the database while pushing a lookup transformation to the database. Let us now discuss the limitations of PDO for unconnected lookups. Similar to lookup transformation, pushdown optimization process, 
stops when unconnected lookup transformation returns multiple matches. PDO process does not work with unconnected lookups, with target partial pushdown. As with lookup transformations for unconnected lookups, PDOs need privileges in the database to create temporary views. Let us now discuss what considerations do we need to make when pushing functions to a database that contains data field. Prior to Informatica version 8.5, functions such as due date can be pushed down only if they do not contain any optional parameter. However, from version 8.5 onwards, to date and to character can take an optional date format parameter. However, the translation from DI to DB functions are sometimes required. For example, Y, 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 M, M, D, D, H, H, 24, column M, I, colon S, S needs to be converted to Y4, M, M, D, D, B, H, H, colon, M, I, colon, S, S on Teradata. Problem can still arise if the date format is not supported by the underlying database. Informatica has tried to detect unsupported formats and fix them, but has not been able to solve all of the issues so far. For example, 6 slash 1 slash 2007 fails for MMDDYYYY format on Teradata. As Teradata expects the date to be 06-01-2007 format. The execution of the generated SQL statement can fail if the underlying database does not support the date format. Let us now discuss how error handling and logging is handled when pushdown optimization is enabled. Some functionalities available in DI may not be available in DB processing. So you need to choose PDO according to your requirement. When PDO is enabled, the database executes the SQL. If any error occurs, the database handles the errors. So it is not possible to make use of ICS error handling features like error files. If we configure a session for a full pushdown optimization and the session fails, ICS cannot perform incremental recovery because the database processes the transformations. Instead, the database rolls back to the transaction. If the database server fails, it rolls back transactions when it restarts. If the ICS fails, the database server rolls back the transaction. For logging, ICS does not get the same level of transformation about the transformation process information in the log because the transformations are processed in the database. A direct collaboration of Informatica and Teradata resulted in creation of the PDO. Let us discuss some best practices here. Try to avoid unconnected lookups whenever possible, and lookups on parallel paths in mappings that would benefit from PDO. The best solution would be to create sequential lookups. Eliminate sorted aggregation and pass-through ports in aggregators and variable ports. It is better to use full pushdown optimization because of large data volumes. Best performance can be obtained by doing all processing inside the database. Do not forget about database query tuning. Few other points to remember are avoid full table scan for large tables. Use staging processing if necessary. Use temporary tables if necessary. And validate use of primary and secondary indexes. Some of the best practices to consider are you should minimize the use of non-PDO convertible transformations and functions, since this will prevent the transformation logic from being completely pushed to the database without using a SQL override. Understand the limitations with your database technology, such as Redshift, Oracle, etc., and the limitations in the use of transformations. You need to also understand the string-to-date time conversion. In your database, using the cast function. This is useful in Override SQL. Let us now discuss recovery strategies in ICS when a workflow with PDO process fails. There could be several reasons when a workflow fails. For example, services could shut down unexpectedly, network failure might occur, or some processes were disabled accidentally when the workflow was running. 
One strategy you could use is that when something fails in the workflow, then suspend the workflow. Another strategy could be to design the processes to be easily recoverable. There are three types of recovery strategies that we should utilize when developing with ICS. Basic restart process. Restart the process when something fails in the workflow. Delete, reload. Process requires partially loaded data to be deleted before recovery. This means while the workflow was loading data to a target and the process fails in the middle, the partially loaded data has to be deleted before recovery. Truncate reload process. You need to perform this only if you require to full refresh your system that stores data. Process performs a truncate before restarting, which all the data in the table are removed before the process is restarted. Let us discuss the basic restart recovery process. Basic restart process is designed to have no intervention and can be automatically restarted with no dependencies. All full pushdown optimization process are restart processes. Data is only committed if all data is successfully loaded. Otherwise, the data is rolled back. An example would be a mapping that is leveraging full pushdown. The reason is that the data is either committed or not committed. No partial data loads take place. So initially, we extract data. If there is some error in extraction, the process is repeated. If not, then transformation of data takes place. If the transformation fails, the process is restarted. Otherwise, the transformed data is loaded in the target. If the loading process fails, then the whole process is restarted. Otherwise, next process is started. Let us now discuss delete then reload next. Delete then reload design approach is used when a mapping can by chance have a partial commit before an unexpected error occurs. If part of the data can be loaded and the process is not easily designed to account for that data, that is being a state aware process, this pattern should be implemented. In delete then reload, if any error occurs in the extraction and transformation process, the process again starts from the extraction of data. But if the load process fails, then delete partial data load task starts. If the deletion process is unsuccessful, then the process is restarted. If successful, the next process can be started. The third type of recovery process is known as truncate reload. This process is easy to recover. All data is reloaded, so rerunning the process does not require such implementation or consideration. This usually occurs during the Teradata data acquisition phase. Initially, the data is truncated, so if this task fails, then it is restarted. Otherwise, ETL process starts, which was explained earlier. Here, each time any task fails, the data is truncated, and the process is restarted from the initial point. There is an independent investment firm that provides innovative private equity solutions to institutional clients worldwide. As one of the first private equity fund of funds, they have a long and distinguished history of investing in ventures, buyouts, mezzanine and distress markets through primary partnerships, secondary purchases and direct investments. The organization needed to provide sales team worldwide a single shared view of client relationships, including contact information, investment history, and recent activity. They wanted to shrink the Salesforce.com integration time to weeks, thereby enabling the organization's client relationship managers to become more productive. They also wanted to ensure that they communicate with clients with one voice through their chosen communication channel and support the company's rigorous compliance and data privacy strategy. To achieve the business needs discussed above, they wanted to synchronize back office client information with Salesforce.com sales management system, support querying across multiple Salesforce.com objects, deliver automatic scheduling of jobs and integrate over 25,000 rows of data between systems per day. However, with the applications and processes they used, Addressing these above-mentioned requirements was tedious and involved many complex steps and processes. Moreover, the turnaround time of the solution was in months. Informatica Cloud's pushdown optimization feature enabled the organization to synchronize and update more than 250,000 rows using the combination of ETL 
and ELT processes. This enabled them to increase sales effectiveness and business efficiency immediately. It also ensured that sales teams delivered cohesive and compelling sales messages for improved client retention. It also increased their communication across the global organization. ICS supported the stringent market regulations regarding compliance and data privacy and introduced up-to-date minute, multi-channel client view. Finally, the organization was able to provide fast, low-risk route to increase their sales effectiveness and responsiveness. In this demo, we will implement full pushdown optimization in a mapping with same source and target connections. In the Data Integration pane, select New from the Navigation pane. To create a new mapping, click Mappings from the New Asset window, and then select the Mapping option. The mapping canvas appears. In the Mapping Properties, enter the name of the mapping as Mapping with Pushdown option. In the Source Properties pane, enter SRC Customers in the Name field and click on Source tab in the Source Properties pane. In the Source tab, select the Oracle connection and single object from the Source Type drop-down and click the Select button. From the pop-up window, select Act Customers and click OK. Similarly, add and configure Act Orders Source Object. To add another source to the mapping, drag and drop the source shape onto the canvas. In the Source Properties pane, enter SRC Orders in the Name field and click the Source tab in the Source Properties pane. Select the Oracle connection created previously from the Connection drop-down and Single from Source Type drop-down. Click the Select button next to the object text box. From the pop-up window, select Act Orders and click OK. Click Fields tab of the Source Properties pane. To edit the data type of Customer ID, click Options and select Edit Metadata from the drop-down. Select Customer ID checkbox and change the value of the Native Type column to Varchar from the drop-down. From Options, uncheck Edit Metadata from the drop-down. Now drag and drop the joiner transformation between Source and Target and click Plus icon to expand the options of the transformation. Link the SRC orders to the detail of the joiner transformation. Select the joiner transformation. In the General tab of the Joiner Transformation Properties pane, type JNR Customer in the Name field. Click the Incoming Fields tab. We see a message saying Field Name Conflicts Detected. To resolve this, under Field Rules for the Master, click on the row below. Select Named Fields from the Field Selection Criteria column and click Configure. In the pop-up window, select the Field Name checkbox to select all the fields and then click Rename Selected tab. Select the Bulk Radio button and prefix from Bulk Rename Options drop-down. Type the prefix CUST in the Specify text box and click OK. Similarly, we have added a prefix ORD to all the column names of the Act Orders table. Click the Join Condition tab in Joiner Properties pane. Ensure that the join type is selected as normal and simple is selected from the Join Condition drop-down. Click plus sign in the Join Conditions pane. From the Master drop-down, select CUST Customer ID and ORD Customer ID from the Detail drop-down. Next, we will add a sorter transformation to the mapping so that we can sort the data before performing any aggregation calculations on that data. Drag and drop the sorter transformation onto the canvas. Map the output of the joiner transformation to the input of the sorter transformation. Delete the link between joiner and target and click on the General tab in the New Sorter Properties pane. 
type SRT customer in the name field and click on the incoming field tab. We will keep that cust customer ID, ORD line total and ORD units sold fields and remove all others. Click on the row below the operator column to select include option. Select name fields from field selection criteria drop down and click configure to configure the incoming field to be included. From the pop-up window, select the cust customer ID, ORD line total and ORD units sold checkboxes and click OK. Click on sort tab and click the plus icon beside sort condition. Select cust customer ID from the field dropdown from sort order dropdown. To add an aggregator transformation to the mapping, drag and drop the aggregator transformation to the mapping. Link the sorter transformation to the aggregator transformation and click on the general tab of the new aggregator properties pane. Type aggregate by customer in the name field and click on the incoming fields tab. Check that only three fields of the sorter transformation appear as incoming fields for the aggregator transformation. Now select the group by tab and click on the plus icon next to group by fields. From the field name drop down, select cust customer ID. Select the aggregate tab and click on the plus icon. In the pop up window, select output field from the field type drop down. Type aggregate total sold USD as name of the field. Select decimal from the type drop down, 10 as precision and 5 as scale and click OK. Click configure below expression column. In the pop up window in the expression text area, type the following expression as shown on the screen and click OK. Similarly, create a new output field, aggregation total units sold USD with expression sum order units sold. To configure the target in the mapping, link the aggregator transformation to the target. Click on the general tab of the target properties pane and type TGT cust order as the name of the target. In the incoming fields tab under field rules, select include from the operator drop down. Named fields under field selection criteria and click configure. In the pop up window, select fields aggregated total units sold and cust customer ID and click OK. Click on the plus icon in field rules and exclude order line total and order units sold fields from the incoming field. Click the target tab and select the Oracle connection same as the source from the connection drop down. Select single object as target type. Click the select button next to object text box. From the pop up window, select act cust order summary and click OK. Click insert from operation drop down and check the truncate target checkbox. Click the field mapping tab and drag cust customer ID beside customer ID, aggregated total sold USD beside total sold USD and aggregated total units sold beside total units sold in mapped field column. Click the validate icon to validate the mapping. As the mapping is valid, click save to save the mapping. To create a mapping task, click New from the navigation pane and select Mapping Task from the New Asset window. In the New Mapping Task screen, type Empty Pushdown in the Task Name field. Select the Active Secure Agent from the Runtime Environment drop-down. Click the Select button and select Mapping with Pushdown option from the Selector Mapping window and click Next. Scroll down the page to Advanced Session Properties and click Add. 
select push down optimization from session property name drop down and select full form session property value drop down click finish to save and close the mapping task click run to run the MT push down task to check if the task ran successfully or not open the my jobs window open the task by clicking the task name here we see a link view session log click that link to check if the SQL query has executed to populate the data in the database check the session log text file we can see a SQL query getting executed check the act cust order summary table the table is now populated with data this concludes the demo of full pushdown optimization. You are now ready to perform a lab. In this lab, you will create a mapping with same source and target connection. Create a mapping configuration task with full pushdown optimization enabled. And check that the target was populated using a database query. This concludes pushdown optimization module. In summary, we understood pushdown optimization and why it is used, discussed ETL and ELT, discussed guidelines and best practices for pushdown optimization, understood recovery and its types, and discussed requirements driving architectural principles.